Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good day. Goodbye. Oh, yeah, that's it. A lot, yeah. The lot less game ended oh. without... Sorry, I was so captivated by what was happening. I couldn't. We didn't even have a speak. chance to jump in. <laughs> that was no. the end of the the Loch Ness game. It's not a game, and it certainly that time wasn't about Loch Ness. <laughs> but this is for one final time the Benji and Nick show, your number one vintage television show in the known world. That's right. In the unknown world, there's loads more, loads of them. Believe me, I'm just not don't know... Benji. And I'm not Nick, and we actually are all starting here because we've got two people that are not themselves as well. I'm not Jamie Anderson. And I am definitely not Shelley. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we have it. So we we're go. none of us who we're meant to be. <laughs> that about wraps it up. Thanks for right. three years of uh, <laughs> it's all fraud. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, and this edition uh, will be uh, reading out some of your very lovely touching emails saying goodbye to the Benji and Nick show. Um, we we ran a, an unofficial and completely disorganized uh, and almost non-existent <laughs> poll as to what we should be talking about. I know Shelley's watched a few things. I haven't watched anything. I don't think Benji has. And I know for certain Jamie Anderson hasn't. So uh, thank you for joining us, Jamie. Uh, you haven't been with us for months, have no, you? No, no. And bringing back my usual standard of uh, valuable uh, contribution. <laughs> I coaxed him back for... Uh, <laughs> For one the final appearance as Lemon Frangipan, it says there uh, <laughs> uh, on the screen. Uh, yeah, since you've been such an integral part of the Benji and Nick show over the years. Oh, except when I wasn't. But bless yeah. you. Thanks. Thanks for all that. <laughs> when you went nothing to us. The, yeah. <laughs> but, just, but, just a piece of dirt <laughs> on our shoe that we cast aside on the, the Victorian shoe grate things. Uh, the, the email, the email, the email, the email address, to, the email address to send your emails to the is podcast at nicholasbriggs.com, uh, which I think will probably stay active. So anytime you want to carry on uh, emailing, that, that's absolutely fine. And we're going to read out a few emails. One of them is from Colin Smith, the mysterious Mr. C, uh, who does our beautiful uh, cover artwork. Uh, and he says, the time has come, my old friends, said the mysterious C. I must leave, for my work here is done. And he <laughs> rides off into the sunset. The townsfolk ask themselves, who was that driveling idiot? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you who he is. He is our cover extraordinaire, who has supplied us with covers for pretty much every single Benji and Nick show in existence uh what a lovely man they're all gorgeous lovely. i must say yeah, yeah. very you talented must. individual you must talented individual uh thank you so much for your service as well i really appreciate it um uh, shelly would you like to take the first email i shall and the subject <laughs> is the I end shall. i shall said shelly as the two exclamation thought. Yeah. Uh, the end exclamation point exclamation point uh, this is from Philip Markham oh. just wanted oh, to well, it was just uh, I have to say that it was sent on the 8th oh. uh, like no, Henry. The, the, the 31st of the 8th in the year 1403 yes my bad my bad <laughs> I'm all discombobulated on. with the ending of the well, show. You know, I, you never do. I know. You never I'm, do I'm emails, not. So you know, I'm not oh. in the swang of things. <laughs> all right. So, Philip Markham says, "Just wanted to see a note to say thank you for the fantastic work the team has provided over the past few years. Your episodes have always kept me entertained on work <laughs> breaks, but even more at the beginning of the pandemic. Breaks were much needed and a perfect escape from working at the hospital. And yours, along with many more podcasts, just helped me switch off just for a bit. Also, many subjects on the podcast meant a meant an expensive trip to Network's website. <laughs> so I'll say thank you yet again, and hopefully we will hear from the Benji and Nick show again someday. Regards, Philip Markham. Send for my iPhone. <laughs> What's he classic. doing sending emails from your iPhone show? It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. See, it's I have that's the story. Mad. Philip and I are... <laughs> <laughs> Your phone it's like I am it, Philip Markham. <laughs> they had in the seventies a party line, didn't they? They had party yes. lines where, you, so that's what it is. You and Philip have a, a party, party line. line. Um, I wonder, uh, Jamie, do you think that Network will notice a downturn in profits now that Benji and Nick show is not? I imagine their sales will be slashed, and <laughs> yeah. people just won't know who they are anymore. So um, you've got a lot to answer for, you lot. 
I know. So we're part of the supply chain. Who's uh, going to buy duty free now? I mean, you know, it's all it's all going to go pear shaped. Now, Benji, here's a there's a, a musical one here that you have to do. I have to do. OK. OK. Well, this one is from Steve Craddock, son of Jack Craddock, uh, who was in Dalek Invasion of Earth 2150 AD on the <laughs> spaceship. A uh, bit of a disagreeable chap. Don't know about you, but Steve isn't. Steve's nice. Uh, the subject of this one is au revoir. Uh, the date of this one is was sent on the 29th of the 8th, 2021 in the year of our Lord 2150. I Yay. was just about oh. to say that as you made Come that comment. On. Yes. This is planned. <laughs> Don't tell me this wasn't planned. Don't tell it, me. It wasn't, wasn't planned. That is insane. Oh, he you must have me. done it. He, he's heard he's heard us joke. 2150. That is amazing. That is the uh, most dear... exciting thing, thing that's happened in three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is it. We'll talk about going out on high. Uh, this occasion brought a, a to mind a certain song made famous by Mr. Frank Sinatra. Uh, and now the end is near, and so we face the final podcast. Podcast, my friends, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, for which I'm certain. I can't sing this without thinking of that Sid Vicious one. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. Live, the course is full, and listen to each and every time, and say, so but it's more than this, you did it your way. Regret, I can't keep singing this. Is regrets? <laughs> there's been a few, and then you again, can. too few to mention. I'm looking at you, Buck Rogers. You did <laughs> what you had to do and <laughs> saw it through without exemption. You planned next week's theme, each careful script along the byway. <laughs> much more, much more than this. You uh, did it your way. Oh. There's a whole other lot here, is that? <laughs> and yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when you bit off more than you could chew. We did. And uh, through it all, when there was doubt, you counted up and marked them out. Yes, out of five exclamation points. Each exclamation point and every star, you did it your way. We've loved, we've laughed and cried, you had your fill, our time for losing, and now as tears subside, oh. much has been so amusing to think you did all that, and may I say, not in a sly way. No, I'm going to lose the chin. No, oh no, not me. They did it their way. For what is a podcast? What has it got? Not itself, then it is not naught that is to say the things we truly feel and not the words of one who kneels the record shows you took the blows and did it, and your, did way. it your, your way. way we did it our way we did <laughs> uh, i never understood how you managed to fit this podcast into your hectic schedule but i really I. appreciate the efforts that you have made and the entertainment you have given it's been a blast and whilst i will miss it greatly i thought you're gonna I sing again greatly I'll see you all at the summer fatally. Uh, I will enjoy re-listening to the past gems. For me, the recent Michael Crichton episodes epitomize everything that I have enjoyed about this podcast and Velociraptors. Uh, at least my wallet will be less stressed without all these recommendations of things to buy and watch. Thanks so much, team. Goodness, Steve, Jack. P.S. I'm hopeful of a Benji and Nick event at next year's big finish day oh you never know yeah. what, what might happen it does seem doesn't it i feel especially with the big finish podcast and i expect jamie you have the same as well on your podcast people just tend to complain that we force them to spend loads of money on things <laughs> seems like <laughs> yes, that's, it does happen. that's how it seems like that you, you you make us poor you fools stop telling us to buy things <laughs> that's true that's the first posts that come up on the big finish facebook <laughs> mm. um okay i'll read this one shall i uh, this yes. is uh, from Mark Bosley, or Bosley, I don't know, Bosley, I'm saying. Bosley. And uh, it was sent on the 29th of August in the year 2204, mm, uh, travelling back to us from the future. Dear Benji, Nick, Shelley and Jamie, like wow. a lot of people, I'm just writing to say that I'm really going to miss your podcast and to thank you for all the enjoyment you've given me. During the pandemic and even before that, in the midst of a hectic working life, the podcast has been a little oasis of sanity who's sure laughter and vintage <laughs> telly chat you you've should. tackled a lot of shows that were already dear to me doctor who blink seven sapphire and steel and you've led me to other shows i'm keen to investigate i loved the owl service well 
fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All I think is just a man, crazy guy with a chainsaw and the music. <laughs> you know, I promised I'd go back and watch that, and I still never have. Uh, recently no, picked up Hornblower oh. and have just ordered Escape Into Night. Oh, oh. With, it, with the Dalek rocks. Uh, I, I, Escape Into Night, famous for Benji watching the first episode and thinking that was it. And I said, no, there are five more episodes. You went, there's more. I mean, how? Where can it go from here? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible show. I don't um, like it. You thought yet. it was an anthology thing, didn't you? You thought that, yeah. that the, end of the first episode was the end of the story. I'm slightly consoled by the fact that there are few podcasts I've not listened to about shows I'd not seen but wanted to uh, wanted to before I heard your views on them that remain for me to enjoy. I don't know whether I understood that sentence. I certainly read it out very badly. Sounded it's good. It's quite a body of work that you've amassed, and I dare say I will be revisiting previously heard episodes from time to time. I couldn't afford to do Patreon. That's fine. But wondered, neither could we, but wondered, will those exclusive episodes ever get a wider release now that podcast is ending? That's a very good point. I'll have a think yeah, about it. Well, quite. Um, I haven't come to a conclusion. Uh, I'd be really interested in hearing the Santaran Experiment podcast, for instance. Well, wouldn't we all? Uh, I'm afraid it was it was wiped by the BBC. Uh, I'm sorry to hear your workload is preventing you from carrying on. Is it too much to hope that one day you'll come back? Yes. Adopts Hartnell voice. Yes, one day. I will, yes, of course. Until continue. then. <laughs> in the original, you might say. The, the original. I saw him in something the other day. What, Richard Carry Handel? On. Yes, he was with Patrick <laughs> Troughton. Yeah. yeah. Richard Handel. What's what? James just laughing? <laughs> Just love the impression. Sorry, <laughs> I just love I just love him eating a um, a peach in the behind oh. the scenes. Film. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's disgusting. It's in isn't it? in the Five oh, Doctors, juicy. which is a Doctor Who anniversary story. Mm -hmm. This guy Richard Herndall, who played the first Doctor in that, he has to just eat a bit William of William Hartnell was dead because yes. William Hartnell was dead. He had to eat a bit of fruit, and it's just he just. I've never seen anybody so ravenously destroy a piece of fruit in such an unceremoniously disgusting way. Just well, I, I tell you, as, some, as, as someone who's over fifty and, frankly, is sixty in a few weeks' time, the uh, when you get past fifty, you start having a sort of weird eating problem where you can't eat anything without it looking vaguely disgusting. It's like John Pertwee in Day of the Daleks eating that cheese. It's quite revolting. And the sandwiches in sea, The Sea Devils. It's sort of your mouth movement and you you drop bits down your chin. And it's terrible. It's, it happened to me on my 50th birthday. <laughs> oh, no. Goodness knows what happens when you're 60. You probably just dribble it all out. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I will, of course, continue to enjoy the Big Finish podcast. Good, good, good. Hard sell. Uh, in the meantime, sincere thanks for all the fun and laughter, all the Loch Ness games, exclamation marks, and gratuitous mentions of the Nazis. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Did it for us. Even better. Ding. Wow. The end of this email is one of my favorite things. All the best, Mark Bosley, sent from my Helmic Regulator. You gave oh, that Helmic yeah. Regulator quite a twist, Harry. <laughs> Uh, Jamie, is it your turn to read an email? Have you read one? I can do one. Yes. Yes. There's um, a there's a missing page in this. Um, I, no, I think I've found the thing. You can yeah, correct good. me if I'm wrong with this. Uh, so this has the subject line written in quill pen. Uh, many Ooh. thanks, best wishes, and tally ho for your future endeavours. Email oh. uh, from the 29th of August in the year 1504. Oh, what happened then, really? Benji? Uh, I'll have a look. Carry on yeah. and I'll have a look. Sounds, yeah. like, sounds like a rough year. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it, this is from um, Velocity Gallery, which I feel like might be a pseudonym. Is that or is that a, an in joke, which I'm not aware of? I don't. Yeah, it's it's uh, Richard Burton, the guy. It's oh yes, you're right. That further down in the email is the sign off. Anyway, there so you go. Been, Richard it's Burton been sent from a long dead actor. Yeah, impressive wow. stuff. You've got these, the great these things fans. happen. Uh, anyway, Velocity slash Richard says, Hi, Benji, Nick, Jamie, brackets, and, Sh and Jamie. That's uh, <laughs> that's me. Uh, I couldn't let the podcast come to its dramatic conclusion without sending a thank you message. So here it is. A thank, thank you, you message. Oh. That was it. Uh, best regards, Richard Burton. P.S. That was a bit lazy. So I'd like to thank you all for a podcast that has been an entertainment and comfort to me and probably lots of other listeners during such a topsy-turvy bit of history. That must be That's 1504. Um, your <laughs> upbeat yet cheerfully sarcastic reviews of telly yeah, that I thought sharp, I yeah. knew uh, or had never heard of was something to look forward to every week. It was very much appreciated. I even got a suggestion for a podcast, uh, X-Bomber, to actually happen. 
which is something that'll never happen again, probably. I'm disappointed <laughs> that I failed to make Nick rewatch Battle of the Planets, though. Tough. Yeah, tough. Uh, PPS. <laughs> There's more PPS. Uh, speaking of Nick. <laughs> Okay. Whilst driving through a southwestern town a few months ago, I saw a familiar bearded and tweedly suited man walking down the high street with tweedly AirPods suited. in and a huge smile on his face. Oh. Uh, I mentioned to my wife and the kids that we were passing the voice of the Daleks. <laughs> as usual, the family treated this as another example of my increasing mental decay, but it made me happy. <laughs> Best wishes to you all for the future. ta Tarar. Tarar. Oh, well, uh, yeah, well, a few months ago, I, I do wear a tweed jacket and mm. um, uh, to destruction, frankly. Um, uh, but I haven't, um, I, don't, I haven't got a tweed suit. I could remedy that. Um, but mm, yeah, so, uh, you must have seen me. I haven't, it must be a few months ago because I haven't worn my AirPods for ages. Uh, I can, I can th only think of the time walking through the high street wearing my AirPods was when I was talking to an old friend of mine on the phone. So that's probably why I was smiling like an idiot. <laughs> I like that. Um, what was it when we went out for some beers once? We were in London for something, I think. It's strange mm. us going out for beers, isn't that never happened? Um, yeah. and uh, we were we were out in London and uh, we were coming out or going into somewhere. Yeah. And this guy was at the door and he just really calmly. It wasn't it wasn't even a Doctor Who event. Just really calmly, just went. That's Nick Briggs. Just carried on. <laughs> that was it. That's all. He said. Just he just went. <laughs> Oh, Nick Briggs. <laughs> it was just, I thought it was a class moment of just complete. Oh, he didn't say it to me then. He just said it. He just, he was kind of walking past. You were there and he pointed. Yeah. Well, I'm he, glad he, I was he, if he said that. You saw him do it, but, but, but he just sort of just did it. That's oh, Nick Briggs. And you sort of said, oh, hello. But there, there, was, there was no like, Nick Briggs. He said, I don't want to talk to you. I just want to say your name. It was just this wonderful level. It was just wonderfully understood. That's oh, Nick Briggs. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, look, it's an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> look, it's a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh look here this is from duncan Whoa. wilson we love duncan i think we certainly do i don't think he's ever written in though has he i don't know anyway he has done in a long time ago not lately time. in uh, 1701 which is when this email was sent on the 25th of august um more than just a podcast is the subject line he says wow. dear nick and benji and shelly brackets dot 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 and jamie close brackets don't want, to, don't want to put this whole email in brackets. That would be a whole parenthesis too far. A long time listener, very absent minded non emailer in of communications. This might not reach you in time for the last episode. Well, it did, Duncan, as I always keep putting off writing in. And then when inspiration hits, it's usually about the time you're recording an episode. And I figure that the subject would no longer be relevant. That's never stopped us and put it off uh, till the next time and et cetera. Little laughy emoji thing any who's on with the babble uh, this email lasts for 17 pages by the way um just i'm joking sing it i want you to sing the whole thing just now. want to say a big thank you for all the fun <laughs> over the years as my email title intonates what's intonate mean um it has been such a joy to be part of this wonderful banter and community. Each oh. episode has been such fun to listen to with a real mixed bag of shows. Some good, some iffy. Heck, I even enjoyed... That was, that was the mixed bag. Sorry. Oh, I Carry see. On. God, I thought you were <laughs> tearing your clothes off. Benji is our Foley artist. <laughs> yes. It's just for today. Mm. Heck, I even enjoyed My Mother the Car. Don't start Benji up on that. In some perverse, <laughs> kooky, mid-60s pop culture vibe sort of way. I've also loved all the emails from other listeners and taking part in a recent Discord chat. Also, a huge thanks to Shane Dumphy, whose books I also won in one of your competitions and thoroughly enjoyed. Good old Shane. Yeah. Uh, it was also your show that turned me back onto the worlds of Jerry Anderson. Yes. And I was lucky enough to win a new Captain Scarlet soundtrack CD too. Ooh. It completely made me change my mind and watch and enjoy a series I previously was ambivalent to. I know what you mean, uh, but new Captain Scarlet really does grow on you. It's a superb piece of work, I think. I'm not just saying that because Jamie's here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. Uh, yeah, I instant. think uh, he knows me well enough to know that I won't say things just to be nice to him. I must confess that yeah. enjoying a double dose of Benji and Nick every week for the past few years, it needs a cream to help clear that up, uh, means that I sometimes get some content uh, of the two podcasts confused so apologies if the canal walk was a big finish podcast but that is one of my faves i think it was benji and nick wasn't it the, the benji nick walk. show yeah the yeah. canal walk Remember that also well. the doctor who commentaries 
uh, Ghost Watch. That's wary episode. <laughs> dear, dear. Where <laughs> my, my computer fell off the sofa and I went, <gasps> uh, and the dining experience. I don't know why saying it quietly makes it more acceptable. Uh, and the dining experience. Curry oh, soup. <laughs> oh, <God>. Hammer <laughs> of God. <laughs> oh, I remember I that one. With, when, I remember that one when, um, when we, yeah, we were going to have a few drinks that evening. I think Jamie felt unwell. I remember for some reason. Did it might you? have been the curry soup. Yeah, I remember Maybe Jamie. the curry soup. <laughs> I remember you felt unwell for some reason. That's what I do remember. I, I feel honour bound to mention. Thanks, thanks, Jamie. Uh, I feel <laughs> honour bound to mention that I did thicken that curry soup up later after you'd gone, and it did look good, didn't it, Jamie? Uh, yes. <laughs> What the... It's amazing what cement can do, isn't it? I just, I, <laughs> I just reduced it by, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I vaguely remember, but I mean, I sent you a video are... of it. Look, I find it. Yeah, but we're into turd polishing territory here, so <gasps> oh, uh, it was oh. really nice. <laughs> no, it was it was lovely. I'm being very cruel. <laughs> lovely sloppy curry. Uh, anyway, he loves to listen to those ones every now and again. It's nice to revisit, isn't it? I must they say that fun. I started listening to the Death to the, the, the Daleks. The, the I can't Daleks. say Death to the Daleks. My favourite Doctor Who story, and I can't say it. Um, I, yeah, I found it vaguely entertaining. And Lord only knows where or how Horror Blakey <laughs> came into being. But it was fun dressing up as him for Big Finish Day and meeting up with that him. That was so fun. That was so impressive. I don't know Horror Blakey from On the Buses. Horror Blakey. Here's to all your many future projects and huge <laughs> hugs to everyone. Peace, love and happiness to you all. Peace Best out. wishes, Duncan. B.S. Big hugs to Rosie and her lemon, too. <laughs> That's right. Dun sense. Duncan and Polly uh, bought Rosie a little toy lemon, um, which she destroyed, actually, surprisingly fast, and which is rare because she doesn't normally destroy things, but she loves anything that she can essentially chase around. Love Bless her. Yeah. That's yeah. your What's dog. It? Did you mention it was a dog? No. Uh, that, yes. No, it's my pet, my it's pet his giraffe. girlfriend. We're speaking of his new girlfriend. Yeah, she, love, she loves lemons. <laughs> Anything she, loves, she can she chew on them. and chase around. <laughs> yes. His kind of gal. A bit, a bit I, uh, of sausage on a string. I have um, to be really honest with you guys. And uh, that when I first scanned through that email before putting it into the document, I misread Lemon 2 as Lemon Lou. And I thought, oh my goodness, why is he sending a Lemon <laughs> Lou? <laughs> See, I saw it as Lemon tool, <laughs> a, lemon tool. <laughs> a lemon tool because of the two exclamation marks it the one looked like an l see i think a lemon very old sounds eyes. nice and a lemon no, tool lemon i mean that's something for cutting lemon presumably you could i tell you what a lemon tool. there is such thing as a lemon tool <laughs> because no 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 is this there? makes sense no this yes. is really serious is this is have, you know when you go to an Indian restaurant and they have those rubbish little salads that they bring on the plate and sometimes they have that thing and have a starter easy. and they have the lemon squeezer tool. Oh, that's a lemon tool. Shelly, there we go. You, you, so Rosie made likes it... lemon tools. Yeah, with her, with her biryani, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I feel that the only one of us here who had a public school education is Jamie. Uh, he should read yes. the next one out because it's got Latin in it. Ah, Ave at que vale, which I go, think Billy is a uh, hail and farewell, isn't it? Well, it says at the end, it says uh, I salute oh. you and farewell. So it's the same thing. I salute you, hail. It's the same thing, isn't it? Good. Good. Oh. Okay. There you go. Uh, well, makes sense that it was written in Latin because it's uh, from the 23rd of August in the year 857 Ooh. BC, possibly. <laughs> Doesn't specify, but I'm no, just no, assuming so. Strange. Uh, and it's from Michael House. Uh, Do you know him, Michael? No. You said no. that in a very knowing way. I'm Michael House. Ah. You know, lovely Michael House. Uh, <laughs> Michael's uh, written into us quite a lot over the years. Yes, he he's very knowledgeable. And yet I've never met him, but I hope to. Uh, well, I don't right. Think I have. Yes. Well, let's, tr let's arrange it for after this. Uh, <laughs> okay. Michael writes, to whom it may concern, oh. thank you all. No, he doesn't say that. He says, thank you for all oh. the Benji and Nick show fun. I'm assuming he means thank you all as well. Uh, yeah. Your wholly undeserved treatment of Tanko notwithstanding. Um, and then there's an arrangement of uh, figures and digits and things there, which I'm assuming is a peculiar face, but it's I can't quite tell. It's a funny face. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, it's a wiggly nose, sort of half smile. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to hear it end but better than letting your real work at Big Finish suffer. Uh, last minute thought. 
pursuant to your belated mention of the Sandbaggers on 2021.08.22 episode, I <laughs> thought I thought of two other exemplars of the best of British television that you never talked about on the podcast. Oh. Callan <gasps> and I, Claudius. Huge Titanic series there, both of them. Super. Well, we, we, never, we, we never had them as the main subject, but they have been touched upon. And if we haven't talked about the snake in the, the titles of I, Claudius, there, I just mentioned it. Thank you. There you go. Um, You've done it now. He I, said, uh, so, I Clavdius, as I, I like Clavdius, yeah. <laughs> so he did say, and now you never will, but you've just done it. So uh, yeah. that's another box ticked. Uh, I guess we all thought there would be time until there wasn't. <laughs> Rather like life. Oh, mm -hmm. oh true. Deep, be, deep, deep, deep. Be seeing you, Michael. P.S. colon. The subject line is Latin for I salute you and farewell. How well, we salute you and farewell, my friend. Aww, okay, that's lovely. It's a bit sad, you. isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a Feels downer. Like I'd, I'd stop listening if I were you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, I think Shelley should read out the David Tremont one. Okay. This oh, is lovely David Tremont. Sorry. <laughs> The just, in the, just in the last sentence of this amazing yes, so, yes. and i'm wearing my squirrel necklace by the way oh I and do. squirrel the subject is squirrel. end of an and era a well a couple of years anyway and it is from david tremont from the 23rd of august in the year of 858 and i do believe that's ad not BC. oh thank you after dinner <laughs> yeah. yes um hi nick Benji and seven. shelley from death to the Daleks, you have created, as you say, a safe place and given us so many joyful stops along the way. Uh -huh. At over 180 episodes, it is now time. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> During those years, you have been taking care of us. We, in turn, have hopefully taken care of you. It is time to move forward and not look back. Though we can no longer take part in these journeys, we will hopefully have a part of your adventures unknown that remain ahead. <sighs> For some, it has been fun, for some, a great joy, and for others, a little more profound. You created a story, a conversation that we all wanted to be a part of. That time we sat around a table with our mates and talked about anything, and we had a lot of carefree fun. Some of us struggling with a few personal issues have found the inclusion that you have given us to be soul-lifting. Personally, to be simply accepted, even with a story so easy and, fu and fun as yours, has given me an inner strength and joy I don't often feel and will always remember. Aww. Thank you for the time, effort, and passion you have given us. Always in your debt, David. And F the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who are not familiar, David, we discovered during my illustrious patron papers that i used to do was, a, <laughs> was attacked by a squirrel in the park and then there was litigation and people were called as witnesses it became a whole thing so i'm also <laughs> david f the squirrel <laughs> beautifully <Yeah>. handled shelly <laughs> that was lovely david thank you so yeah. much for writing that, Isn't I was, that lovely i was quite moved yeah, it's really it does move you doesn't it it's really mm. it's rather touching isn't it in fact yeah. as you can tell i'm much further from the microphone <laughs> Um, anyway, this is called this. It's the end. Shall, I, shall I do this one? I don't think I've oh, done yeah, one sorry. for a while. Haven't you so done one for a while? It, was, it seemed to last uh, forever. So. Including him like that. Yeah, to be fair, I've, I haven't been here since I sung. Um, <laughs> just butting in to take a take a, take an email here. No, go on, do um, it, do it. No, I don't want to now. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've changed. I've changed now. I'm, I'm over this. I'm over this. Uh, this one's called It's the End, uh, sent on the 23rd of the 8th, 2021, the year of our Lord, 1323. Oh, 1323. Did yeah. you find out what happened in 1504, by the way? Yes, I did. I've got it here. It's actually some quite fun little facts in this one here. Really? Michelangelo's sculpture of David was completed. Wow. Um, which you can go and see. And next time you see it, remember us. Um, Raphael paints the marriage of the virgin. Don't think of us with that one. Um, <laughs> Matthias Grunewald paints a crucifixion. Definitely don't think of us with that uh -huh. one. Um, it still seems to be about art. It must have been a really say, good year for art. Of artists. Um, uh, Isabella the first of Castile signs her will and testament. Um, Oh, here's, here's a, oh no, it says, uh, Nut Avelson's Rebellion was crushed, but I misread it and just looked, didn't see the rebellion bit, and I just thought crushed? it said, Nuts was crushed. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound very they, nice. They made the first topic. <laughs> with a lemon tool. They crushed him with a lemon tool. <laughs> 
Yes, and that's how we got the lemon cracker, that famous <laughs> ballet uh, play. Oh, I've looked up 1323 already. It was a common year starting on a Saturday. It was a common, it was a common year. Yeah. Well, it means there's been a many of year. them. Not a yeet, a yeet year. <laughs> The yeah, first yeah. great black death epidemic spreads through southern parts of Asia, killing 50 million people by 1353. Oh, it's cheery. Happy, Happy times. I... Yeah. Uh, what, are, what else? Deaths. Anyone famous die? Uh, <laughs> Isabella of Burgundy, Queen of Germany, died in oh, She was nice. I liked her. Yeah. Andrew Harkley. Joan de Capri, just north of the M4. <laughs> the first Earl of Carlisle, an English military leader, died on the 3rd of March. Uh, what bit, of a, bit of a blow there. It doesn't say, um, but I think it could have been the Black Death. I don't know. Uh, that's that's it, really. Nothing. Uh, a conflict between Ingeborg of Norway. Ingeborg was also uh, the name of John Pertwee's wife. And the regencies of her son in Sweden and Norway ends with the diminution of her power. <laughs> sad, oh, she was quite times. old then, wasn't she? Who, John Pertwee's wife. Yeah, she'd obviously right. lived for a long time. Well, I think <laughs> she might still be alive. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it goes right back in time to 1323. Um, right. Well, I'll get on with Chris's email. Uh, Hi, guys. It's always sad when anything you love ends. So I thought I'd write in just to let you know how much joy your podcast has brought me. I started listening at the beginning of lockdown 2020 with your episode on Lizzie Dripping. Yes, I remember that well. And despite that, maybe oh, not God, being the terrible, best show you covered, I've been hooked ever since. It's funny how that happens. People, we, we, we get you whether you like it or not. Uh, <laughs> since I've changed jobs, I'm planning a big move and have survived the trials of 2020. And your podcast, with its friendly nattering about old TV, has been a great help. I'm roughly Benji's age and my dad is roughly Nick's. Um, so it's always been a lovely experience to listen to the kind of conversations that we always have. And you've even persuaded me to try some of the shows he's been bothering me about for years. Well, you have to <laughs> let me know what those ones are. Um, I've gone back to some of the earlier episodes recently. Your commentary on Death of the Daleks had me in stitches. <laughs> um, if they ever do that on Blu-ray, I'm sorry, but they must call us back. We must. Have, we must do the official commentary. It's only fair. Um, it's always been a favourite ever since being given the VHS with the exploded Dalek on it for Christmas as a child. <laughs> that yellow cover. Oh, uh, and your impressions of Bilal as a companion. That way leads to death. Uh, had me sniggering in the supermarket, much to my embarrassment. <laughs> Those strawberries lead to death. Be more like not, not powder, as, not as embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. Not as embarrassing as if Bilal had actually turned up in the supermarket. <laughs> Could you reach the pears? Um, <laughs> no, you're not allowed them. You're an alien. Um, go eat those weird pea things that they were eating. in The, the, the mashed potato, wasn't it? Soggy mashed potato and bits of tin foil. Uh, eat that instead. <laughs> Delicious. Mm, have, have some incense shoved up your nose by a crazy priest. Um, <laughs> uh, it's moments like these that have made the podcast such a warm and relaxing listen. And whilst <sighs> I'm going to miss it, I'm grateful for you both, Shelley and Jamie. Uh, any chance of bothering him one last time? Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Are hey, you, Jamie. Are you, hey, Jamie. Yeah, Am I you bothering you? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, can, can, Jamie. Consider Jamie, me exceedingly Jamie. bothered. <laughs> well done. Well done. All the best for your future endeavours, Chris Gerard. Thank you, Aww, Chris. It's been, it's nice, a pleasure. It? been a pleasure. Hot off the press is the news that uh, Ingeborg, uh, John Pertwee's <laughs> wife, is still alive and she's 86 hey, years old. Yeah. Good on her. Good on her. There you go. Uh, right. All good things dot 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 is the subject of this one from Big Al, Alex Pass, uh, sent on the 24th of August in the year 1003. Good year. All good things must come to an end, dot, dot, dot. But reruns are forever. Little laughy emoji or smiley. Big smiley emoji, I think that is. Yeah, a toothy smile. All the best to Benji, Nick and Shelley. But screw Jamie. No, it doesn't say that. Uh, <laughs> thanks, <good. laughs> thanks for all the hours of entertainment, laughs and general mishmash in between two slices of toast. Little bread emoji <laughs> there. Uh, I'm already looking forward to the anniversary reunion special. Winky emoji. All the best from Big Al. End credits. Play in silence. Goodness. Crying emoji. Oh, very adric there. It was yeah. a good year, actually, that one. Pope Sylvester II uh, dies after a four-year pontificate, whatever that means. Pontificate. Uh, 
pontificates. It's like a certificate for swimming, isn't it? But uh, for popes, essentially. Well done. You managed to swim through the through the pool <laughs> wearing that hat that you wear. And congratulations. <laughs> have a pontificate. You're a twenty five meter pontificate. Twenty five yeah. mm meter pontificate. Millimeter. Pon we're going to say twenty five oh. millimeter pontificate. Those but, popes can't I'm swim sorry very to... well. Just to bring this up, this is just really weird. Can I just yeah. get something to show you, which yeah, I will yeah. describe in audio terms in a moment? <laughs> okay, this is going to be exciting. It's his Kellogg What's swimming badge. He's just walked over to the back of the room. He's shimmying behind something. He's coming back towards us, holding right. it. Oh, what is it? Oh, so, well, when searching for some stuff recently for a project, at the bottom of a box, yes, I found these. <laughs> oh, your old oh, wow. swimming trunks. They are my old swimming trunks from when I was about <laughs> eight years old, and they've no got way. my pontificate badges on. <laughs> Kellogg's, your, I hope. Your braids. Including uh, level five water skills, oh, uh, international karate. TA 800 meters distance award, territorial army, and uh, <laughs> yeah, international STA junior diver badge. Oh, wow. So, uh, that's yeah. Impressive stuff, Jamie. That, that pontiff's got nothing on me and my badges and my <laughs> shorts from 30 that's years it. ago. Oh, if, you ever get, if you ever get stranded it's... in the shallow end, Jamie's the one to help out. <laughs> and if you find <laughs> yourself being, being a small black brick with a red ring around it, then you're definitely safe. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what we trained with. Uh, anyway, sorry, that's, what, uh, that's what my swimming costume makes me look like. <laughs> <laughs> who what wants to do the next one i think it's your turn isn't it uh nicholas no, i just did one then oh yes you did yes you did <laughs> sorry yes well done have a have a blu-ray of lord of the rings return of the king oh, oh god what a promise. Promise. Yeah. eat it then watch it uh, <laughs> Shall I do this last? Go this on, one? do it. Okay. It's not the so, last one. There's no, I, 15 I, more after this. And I'm gonna, we're going to sing all, all of them. <laughs> far from being this all This one is from Mike Lacey uh, in the, uh, when was it sent? The 10th of August in the year 2235. So we're looking forward to that being delivered. <laughs> uh, the subject is Fare Thee Well. Um, Dear Benji, Nick, and Shelley. I'm sad that the Benji and Nick show featuring Shelly Dean will be coming to an end. He wrote that. I didn't just say that because <laughs> I felt left out. Salty. It's been a weekly bright spot for a few years now, entertaining me during boring days at work, calming me during chaotic days at work, and helping me get through COVID lockdowns and the stress of a recent job change. But I can understand why you have made the decision. I've always wondered how you found the time to do the podcast, the extra content for Patreon, parentheses that i regret really never joined along with all now. your work at big finish your projects outside of big finish and still have time left for your family and friends yeah i don't yeah before you go i'd <laughs> like to suggest a show for you to review oh i've Too recently late. been watching some older shows with peter davison including a very peculiar practice and oh. at home with the great weights yeah great weights is that saying am i saying that right mm, you are if I had to pick one, it would be at home with the Braithwaites. Although watching just the first episode wouldn't do it justice. I've been binge watching it because it's so addictive and every episode ends with a bombshell that makes you want to continue watching. It reminds me a little of Breaking Bad in that everyone has secrets and their lives are in a constant downward spiral. Just when you think things can't get any worse, they do. I'm only halfway through series three, but I'm curious about why the last four episodes of the final series were not written by the show's creator, Sally Wainwright, who wow. wrote all of the other episodes. Wow. I don't know if you have any insight on that or if Peter Davison might. Uh, she Can was you... fired. Yes. I just made, I just made that up. <laughs> she disappeared in a plane crash over Alaska with... Uh... <laughs> Very that good, other guy. The guy who um, read the sandbaggers, yeah. Yes. Well, that's enough of my review. I look forward to your remaining podcasts. Wah, wah, wah. And I wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank you for the smiles and the memories. Sincerely, Mike Aww. Lacey. Aww. Goodness. There's a... No, <laughs> no time for Braithwaite, though, sadly. No. No. I mean, we did do a very peculiar pra practice, as it turns yes. out. Yes. Hmm. No, no one we have one... Of well, sorry. I was going to say, there's only one set of Braithwaite's that I like, and that's Mr. and Mrs. Braithwaite from Wurzel Gummidge. There we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, see what I did there? This is from Chris Garrard, not Gerard. I thought for a mm. moment I'd got two emails from the same person. Holy Chris Garrard made this, made my Davros mask. Did he really? Yes. 
Thanks, Chris Garrard. I'm showing it off now if you can't see. It's gorgeous, it. to be fair. Dave it Ross. is gorgeous. Dave Rose. Dave David Ross. Ross. Dave Ross. <laughs> well, yes, it's hole in the pod waves, is, is what he says with an exclamation mm. mark. Dear Liza. <laughs> Uh, there's a hole in my podcast, Eliza. Just labor the joke. Um, so this was sent on the 20th of August in the year 1258. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like see Gregorian chants all round. I love it. We love it. We love it. Uh, dear Benji and Nick, brackets, forget the others. No, didn't say that. Uh, firstly, I would like to say thank you in block capitals for reading out my email on your recent Jurassic podcast, Jurassic Park podcast. Sorry, it wasn't just a podcast from the Jurassic um, period. Uh, when you announced that the Benji and Nick show was coming to an end, I felt utterly gutted in inverted commas. Does that mean you didn't really feel gutted? Uh, you show... You show, your show has given me immense pleasure since I began listening way back in the old days. Old. Quite, quite fond of uh, inverted commas, I think, Chris. Uh, me too. So I think we've got something in common there. Uh, your brilliantly entertaining and hilarious reviews of old TV shows and films cannot be replaced in any way. And a huge hole has now been left in the podcast airwaves. I shall miss you both. Thank you. But in block capitals many dots afterwards i have recently begun to listen to the big finish podcast so i will get my benjamin nick fix from there instead i used to listen to the big finish doctor who stories back in the early 2000s when a rather rotundly built mr creosote lookalike ex-work colleague <laughs> <laughs> would kindly bring them into work for me to listen to i hope the person isn't listening having um to with put a up with his... minute. Yeah, i'm <laughs> full up his... Incessant blabberings and B.O. was a small <laughs> price to pay for these audio masterpieces. <laughs> I must say, yeah, he certainly he's here now. Uh, having to put up with his insane. Oh, no, I've just read that. Sorry. Uh, I must. I just I like that sentence so much. I want to read it again. <laughs> having to put up with his incessant blabberings and B.O. was a small price to pay for these audio masterpieces. That is, in fact, the new Big Finish strap line. I was going to say um, that needs to be a tagline okay. <laughs> somewhere in the Big Finish world. <laughs> that reminds me of when I was at the Sci Fi Channel and someone got a bit uh, tasty with the graphics generator during a live broadcast or with the broadcasting of a film. And they put because they believed no one was watching it. And it was some awful old film and they put up on the graphic generator live to all the viewers was, is it just me or is this awful? <laughs> 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 to see if anyone would notice. And one viewer contacted us to complain about it. And that person got sacked. For oh, wow. No. Yeah. Wow. But I did say when everyone I was working in marketing at the sci fi channel then, and when everyone was appalled by it, I said, hey, guys, though, but isn't that the best strap line in the world? <laughs> <laughs> is it the sci-fi channel is it just me or is this awful <laughs> i was the only person laughing anyway people don't have sense of you a sense of humor in corporate settings do they um i must download uh, or buy the cds and begin listening to them again says chris as i do not see that particular colleague anymore <laughs> after a rather rather Sad and tragic incident with a wafer thin mint in a local restaurant several years ago. I've got a feeling Chris is winding us up something wrong. Mm. Anyway, I must go. There's a mountain of spuds here that aren't going to feel themselves. Thank you again, chaps. Take care. Kind regards, Chris Garrard, Belmarsh Prison Cooking Wing. Nice. <laughs> is this when Jamie, you tell us, actually is in Belmarsh Prison? You know, I think he's got all the time to sculpt those Davros masks. <laughs> Is it made, made out of out. potato? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a handy right. snack and a lovely disguise. There are just two more emails. I, I know you, you want more than that, but there are, <laughs> there are just two more. Who's going to do them? Well, I mean, surely as Benji and Nick show, you should do them. Or do you want a break and want me and Shelley to do them? Benji, you do this one. Do the short one. I'll do the long one. Okay. It's okay. a compelling argument, Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> the subject of this one is goodbye with a sad crying face. Uh, it was oh. sent on the 17th, uh, 17th of the 8th, 2021, the year of our Lord, 1126. Good year. Yeah. Um, they invented oh, tennis that year. Did um, they? No. Um, this <laughs> <laughs> the tennis did it, you remember. <laughs> it says here, morning spuds. Uh, just a quick message to say how sad that I am that you're going to end the podcast. I've listened from the very beginning and have mostly, only joking, enjoyed them all. 
Well, you know, we <laughs> yeah, well, we can all say the same. <laughs> yeah, uh, good yeah, good yeah, luck mostly. with all of your future projects. I will miss you. I uh, have to go now as I need to rock gently in the corner and cry. Oh, oh. Julian, what a... same, Julian. Same. It's sad times. It's sad times. The reluctant it, end. It was a common year starting on Friday, 11 26. Um, <laughs> what else? Alrighty then. <laughs> Uh, nothing, Shrewsbury nothing Castle happened. is granted by Henry the First, King Henry the First, uh, to his second wife, Queen Adeliza of Louvain, or Adelicia. The command of the castle is given to William Fitz Allen. There we go. Ah, good nice old man. Bill Allen. Bill, so, Allen. Uh, Bill, Bill Allen. Allen. Bill Allen. This, Big guy. Uh, Big guy. This bad uh, teeth. <laughs> This podcast has no subject, um, but uh, it was sent on the 16th Email, August. you mean? You mean the email. Yes. Well, so, I, I say podcast. podcast, podcast also yeah. has no subject. Ironically, We're going to yes. get down to it. You're so <laughs> Much right. Much to Mr. C's chagrin in doing our uh, cover. Yeah, yeah. So I don't He's like, what are you guys front? doing? What are you guys doing? I'm like, I have no, nothing really. We got nothing. <laughs> no idea. So, yes, yeah, sorry, this uh, email has no subject. This person has no brain. Me, I'm referring to. It was sent on the 16th of the 8th in the year 1706. I really want to know what happened in 1706. I really want oh, to know. Okay, I've got it. a fact that's local to you from 1706, if that What's helps. That? Yeah, go on. Uh, it's Mary Channing, who oh. was pregnant at the time that she was convicted of the murder of her husband, was burned at the stake uh, in Dorset in front of a crowd of 10,000 onlookers. Yeah, I was there. It's yeah. a big crowd, isn't it? 10,000. Yeah. That was probably Imagine the being entire the people population. At the back thinking, is, is she on fire yet? I don't know. I can't <laughs> see. I've got some big bloke with massive air in front of me. I can smell something cooking. It's probably a... Um, I, <laughs> no, I, that was yeah. me. I, ha I had the biryani last night. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, um, that is probably the, the entire population of Dorset back in those days. Yeah. Um, yes, this is from Martin Johns. He says, uh, Domestos deals with all known criminals. <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated to find out why or how. <laughs> Hi, Benji and Nick. I nearly choked on my mint aero bar when listening to your public information episode from July the 11th. <laughs> you were reading out my email concerning Telly Savalas and his brother Domestos from Kojak. <laughs> I think it may be time to answer a question that went uncleared. In the first season of Kojak, George Savalas is credited under his Greek name, Demeth Demethines. Demos. In Demos in the also Demestos. <laughs> See, you've done it again in the Demosthenes. also starring credits. Then from season two, he is credited under George Cephalus. Great episode on the public info films. Really amusing. I think the character of death even appeared in one of the films, though I can't remember which. Oh, the that's Salmon a... Moose. Two, only a fool breaks the two minute rules. Another suggestion for a classic to take a look at would be the original Upstairs Downstairs, which I consider to be the best TV drama of its kind ever made, especially the fourth series, which covers World War One. Very good. P.S. Pantheon does sound better than Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. All the best, Martin Johns. That wasn't a goodbye one. Um, I don't know why I put that in there, but thank you very much. <laughs> that was lovely to hear from you. I am an inefficient fool. <laughs> uh, so we now proceed uh, to the uh, hotly awaited subject for this uh, podcast. There isn't one. Well, <laughs> there is and there isn't, you see, because yeah. we, we were slightly overwhelmed by the response that we received <laughs> uh, regarding all of the things that we should be watching. And there are just so many. And, and because we're nice people, we didn't really want to let anybody down. And we just thought, why don't we just go through them and just have a little chat, see what pops up, if it's anything, you know, that, that rings a bell or not. So it's kind of what we do. in front of you? Uh, I've got the Benji Nick Show um, page up now. Uh, there's plenty of entries on there. I expect you've got some on the Nicholas Briggs page. I've also got some on my Twitter oh. as well. There's just loads of them. There's heaps, heaps and bounds of them. Well, on, of, the, of the few yeah. oh, no, that were, we're mentioned... Not gonna, we're not going to read them out, are we? No, <laughs> but of the few that were mentioned that I decided I had to watch if I were to participate at all in this conversation, um, <laughs> I were Blake 7, uh, Star Trek, uh, Next Generation, All Good Things, and The Tripods uh, oh. final episode, which I we must discuss. So, um, <laughs> Was it all for nothing? So sad. So those were the three that I did 
follow up on and and get a little knowledge on since I hadn't watched any of them. So could you do a precy? You know what you thought of each of those now? Well, you guys, I mentioned already my opinions of the first episode of Blake Seven. <laughs> <laughs> which was what is going on? I cannot continue watching this. There's 20 minutes left. I need to stop it. Um, I did continue on and yeah. I'm now on to the third or fourth episode. I'm not sure. Um, I just, the first episode, it just, I, I, it left me longing for a little bit more than what was given, which I just, I didn't understand what was going on for most of it. Um, and I know that things what? you have what? to watch. Yeah. What, well, what? I understood what was going on. Yeah, but you've watched the entire course. series. No, no, but I understood it when I watched it. You know what I mean? I, there's nothing complicated going on, is there? It, there's, it's so slow that you don't know what's happening and why it's happening. Hmm. All right. And well, I fair, feel fair like. Dues. Fair point. Anybody who's watched the entire series, in hindsight, you can go, oh, yeah, no, the first episode makes total sense because you now know where it all ends up. I would say that it, I felt like it, it makes sense because it, it sets it up really brilliantly. My that, that It's your opinion. It's, <laughs> I think they set it up rather well that he's, a, you know, he's an ex-terrorist, essentially. They've wiped his memory and then he's finding it all out. And then eventually, you know, it, it, I think it's kind of done in quite a good way and he plays it so fantastically um, yes i mean i prefer the first episode of blake seven to the entire series i love the second <laughs> episode as well it's like it's like a different series i, yeah, I don't the second really episode like blake got seven much became, better yeah yeah second one's cool it's got that man from which Chuckle they actually Vision filmed first by the way did they that's they filmed interesting the second episode before they filmed the first episode oh see Fat look at me void. i got i got knowledge research research <laughs> So, but yeah, Someone... so I mean, I will continue on and I, okay. I, you know, I, too many people that I know like it so much yeah. that there has to be something to it. So I'm going to, I, like I said, I'm, I'm on like episode yeah. four now. So if you get 50, towards the end, flies can't be wrong. <laughs> when you get towards the end, particularly like the last um, series of Blake seven, it sort of changes into a bit of a different show. So it's quite interesting to watch as well. Uh, okay. Jamie, have you ever watched Blake seven? Well, I was just thinking, actually, uh, if, if I say a phrase now, you can cut it out and paste it in exactly the same way when somebody <laughs> asked me this. I'm afraid I've actually never seen this show. <laughs> if you just take that and you can use You've that. You've never repeatedly. seen Blake Seven? No, but I've seen clips of Blake Seven. And, yeah. and what did you think? Well, being a Doctor Who fan since three years old, I always watched it and sort of felt like, oh, this feels like a bit of a sort of, less fun Doctor Who. Yeah, I think well, that just about sums like Blake Seven up. Yeah. But that's enough to put <laughs> yeah. you off, isn't it? Well, Jamie, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I'm about to shock you here because I just uh, just typed in your name and Blake Seven and it comes up on Blake Seven's official, or on, you know, the Blake Seven Wikipedia page oh, come on, uh, we'll for see. the Blake Seven audio drama. <laughs> it says here, uh, it's wrong, that's why it's funny. Um, <laughs> for, um, for, rem <laughs> for remnants, uh, the episode of Blake Seven, it says here, it was written by Simon Gurio, directed by Ken Bentley, sound designer Martin Montague and the music by Jamie Anderson. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Even, I, even I've confused Jamie's name with Jamie Robinson from time yeah, to time. It happens quite frequently, particularly in big it. finish days. So, um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks. Can't stand it. Don't know it, but I did the music. <laughs> um, uh, Shelley, can I move you on to your next program that you watched, please? You can move me on, which yeah. uh, we'll do the tripods. Okay, oh, right, that's yeah. enough of that. Uh, move on to the next one after that. <laughs> <laughs> So I watched the first two episodes. Yeah, did you? And follow, then follow I watched the last last episode. Yeah, because you guys said to watch the the final episode of Tripods, and I, I didn't. But you know. I actually I didn't hate this. I, I thought love it was the I I just the very beginning the first five minutes of it was just so amazing to me because you know you think oh it's like a little little house on the prairie it's like old school they're all and all of a sudden you know, it, it flashes up that it's the future. It's like 2089, I think it was. Um, and you're like, wait, what? And there's a horse-drawn carriage. Everyone's all prairie looking. And then when the very first time you see the tripod's foot just yeah, yeah. roll across and just crash down on the ground, it was like, ooh, what do we have here? So 
it kind of intrigued me. It's an interesting setup, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but it was it was very sad to I was very sad to find out that there was only two series done of a three series book, uh, book series. Uh, Disney owns series, the rights series. to the books now. Uh, is there any talk of doing it? Vaguely. No. Well, there, no, there used again. to be, but, but there wasn't. I've got some interesting um, tidbits about actually the tripods and this, particularly how it ended and, and X, Y, Z. Because um, as as I'm sure you saw, Shady, it ends on a cliffhanger. They didn't yeah. make the third series. It ended with the, the horrible and sad lines. Uh, has this all been for nothing? Which is so sad. And the answer but, is, of course, yes. Yeah. yeah, well, it had, yeah. Yeah, because the, the, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. But they, well, I they, mean, the reason they cancelled it is because it was re it was terrible and really unpopular. Well, and well, very the, expensive. It's very, yeah. very expensive. I don't believe it was that. terrible. I, I, I loved it. Um, but Duh. at the time, Duh. making it, they were all preparing to do a third series. They, they, yeah. they'd been told they were doing a third series. Um, and then they someone came really... to their senses. Well, the, 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 the mood at the, in the, in, you know, at television center was at the time as they were really excited because it's set in Panama, a lot of it and some of it in the States. And so they were thinking, wow, you know, this could, this could trans, yeah. you know, transport us to, to different places because they were up against the A team, which is, yeah. you know, that especially the, the heyday of the A team, you know, it's not the I think the weather forecast for would have got better viewing figures than this though. I love the tripods. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Just because you don't like it, Nick, I love it. And there, there are legions. <laughs> you don't like it. <laughs> there are legions of Benji and Nick show listeners that no, they that, do, yeah, yeah. that love it. And uh, you know, no, it's one no, of the. I, I, just... I can see its shortcomings. But I just, yeah. I love it. I... The thing I can't get over with the tripods, apart from that it's sort of really boring, is um, and very badly acted mostly. Um, it's a great idea, but the idea, who is the original writer of the books? John Christopher. Christopher. John Christopher. Yeah, Christopher. Right. You know, what he's basically done, because I know The War of the Worlds, right, the H.G. Wells novel, because I've adapted it, so I've read it quite a lot. And in that book, H.G. Wells describes what society might end up being if the Martian tripods stayed in control of the Earth. And what John Christopher has done is taken that two paragraphs and made a book out of it. And as I have said repeatedly, he's in the clear now, of course. Um, what I've said repeatedly is how come he never got sued by the H.G. Wells estates? Because he, he admitted just... it. Yeah, I know he even missed it. So why yeah. didn't he get sued? He just stole the idea from another novel. I mean, you know, what shall I do? Shall I just go and uh, read a James Bond book and take a story idea out of it and make a but, series but, of books but, and say, but you I know, that's but okay. People, but people do. do. Writers do that all the time. But I mean, you have to pay. I'm that, sure you, that's I'm someone sure you've else's had a, intellectual I'm sure property. You, but surely you've riffed on something before as a writer. Sure yeah, but the you, point you... is, yeah, that's another thing. If you're influenced by a thing, but he he took an actual idea and said he'd taken the idea and wrote books, and no one sued him. I don't understand why nobody sued him. Because maybe they is... like the books and just thought, fair enough, they're good stories. Yeah, but, they're great. But why Benji, that like... never happens in the real world. You know, well, it, ha thought... it happens. It happens. There was an interview that I yeah. watched a special documentary on YouTube about the tripods. The and... cult of the tripods. Yes. Yeah. And what he was oh, interviewed that, yeah. and he was he I he was saying in this interview, he said, you know, I I wrote the book and I didn't realize that I had taken this from H. G. Wells. Ah. He said he he didn't do it knowingly. So maybe that was his trying to get out of jail free card, you know, Hail Mary to say, oh, I didn't really know what I was doing. My I don't bad. think that's any, I don't think that's. No, I know. I know. Uh, Jamie has left. I heard him turn his microphone off and just leave. He's obviously a massive fan of the tripods and I love just the too far. <laughs> okay, move on to the next program. And the one, the last one I did watch was Star Trek: Next Generation, All Good Things. Yeah. Which was a real treat for me because I've never watched any Star Trek Next Generation. Wow. And to watch the final episode was really bizarre <laughs> because obviously there's yeah. a whole, you know, peep characters are coming back and I could tell that, ooh, it's a big deal that he's seeing this person. And I'm like, well, that must be so yeah, weird. That's, yeah. And older I mean, as well, which is and weird. And I'm familiar, isn't it? you know, I, being that it's such a cultish show, I'm familiar with all the characters. So I know who Data is and LeVar Burton with the um, banana clip on his eyeballs um 
What is his uh, Jordy? Uh, that's his name. Jordy, yeah. Jordy, yeah. Jordy no, was, you know banana course. clips from the eighties? Yeah, 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 hair yeah. Things. That's exactly um, what he had on his is, face. Exactly. Exact yeah. thing. Anyhow, um, so I knew all the characters, but I don't know, you know, if they died, if they left the show. I have no idea. So I knew that were moments when they he would, you know, f- when uh, Jean Luc Picard would would end up in the past, and he'd see someone that we haven't seen, and I apparently. You know the 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 blonde lady who was the captain. Tasha Yar. Oh no, not a captain. She was the captain she when he was there, all she? the way in the back. She, but she apparently she was only she in the, the first series. She wasn't the captain yeah, Tasha, though. I no. thought she was the captain when he because she was showing him around the ship when he in the very very past. Yeah, yeah. That she wasn't the captain. Oh. Tasha yeah, Yar. Yeah. She was the security the, with the blonde hair. Yeah, the Bob, yeah, sure. blonde Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyhow, my, I she, thought she, she, got, she got killed, killed in, in the episode. Yeah, I don't know the characters. Evil. Skin of evil, skin of evil. Yeah. Which so weirdly it... enough, and I have no idea why. I often find myself on Spotify listening to the soundtrack to Skin of Evil, and I have no idea why. There we go. No. Hmm. Don't know why. That's strange. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Okay. So anyhow, yeah, yeah. So it was. Yeah. I enjoyed watching this a lot. I just. Even out of knowing, not knowing much about the characters, it was just, I mean. Stylishly they, made, isn't it? Oh, it's just, mm. it's its so, I, and it's so, it was very uh, Day of the Doctor for me, you know, like all 12, you know, when, with every, when they have the no, past, present, future uh, Enterprise ships firing into the anomaly that they find out that because they did that, they created it and it became all timey-wimey. Oh, uh, right. I've forgotten. Yeah. I've yeah. That was the whole point it. of it was I've that there was the this episode and that <laughs> there was this, <laughs> there was this anomaly yeah. that was cr- causing him to be traveling yeah. through yeah. time. And yeah. he eventually got to a place somehow with Q, which I had to look up because I didn't know. I knew John, what John Delancey, is that yeah, his name? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so I had to look up who the character Q was and what he meant to the whole story, and um, and it was just very interesting. I I liked the concept of it. I liked the acting. Obviously, I mean, he's you know Patrick Stewart is just amazing. Engage, amazing, he was bloody great. He was amazing. Yes. So and so attractive. Just he's one of those men that you're just like, and and it's funny because you see him playing the future him, which is now him. You know, yeah, like yeah, when they yeah. filmed it and you're like, no, he still looks exactly the same as he did when he filmed this. <laughs> he does not age. Yeah. That man does not age. Well, I beg to differ, but oh, uh, no, he does he's... age. Well, but I mean, he ages well. <laughs> he you know? ages yes. well. I mean, I mean, he in does look way. a lot older and his voice in, in Picard, his voice is old, you know. Yeah. Hey. But that but happens, doesn't look it's as happening old... to my voice as we speak. <laughs> he doesn't look as old as they make him look in no, I see your point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I really enjoyed watching that. Really, really I remember quite it. liking it because I did follow Next Gen. Mm-hmm. I think I sort of dropped out a bit in the last season. I think I was sort of up to my eyebrows with it a bit. But There's uh, a lot of it, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I can't eat. Well, there are still some episodes in that final season that I haven't seen, but I did watch the the finale, the season finale, the series finale. Jamie, did we ask you whether you'd watch the tripods? Uh, I'm sorry to say that I actually haven't seen that series. You're lucky. Uh, uh, did you ever see Next Generation? <laughs> yes, I watched it all the time. And I absolutely loved it. And it was BBC, hey. BBC Two weeknights, you know, six o'clock kind of fodder. And and it was one of those shows where you could keep watching it because there were so many episodes. Chances are you wouldn't come across the same episode again. And even if you did, it was still cool. So yeah. actually, I want to go and watch it now. Of all the things you've talked about today <laughs> it has that effect that. doesn't it yeah it's yeah. a good show apparently it's, it's 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 going off netflix at some point <gasps> yeah, yeah I, so. I i i panicked and immediately bought the original series not the next generation <laughs> although that's on my list and then only to read then it's not coming off netflix in the immediate future so i, I watched it I on suggested... amazon yeah Pardon? it's on amazon i watched it on amazon is it on it's Amazon? On, yeah, because I don't on, have Netflix anymore. It's so. on Netflix in this country. Yeah. It used to be, I when I came to America to visit, it, one of my favorite things was looking forward to watching 
Star Trek on Netflix because it wasn't on Netflix in the UK. And then it oh. came to, so it's probably on Amazon. It's not on America. Amazon over here. Yeah, in America no, no. it is. It's not on, you can buy it on Amazon here. You can get it for season you can buy one anything for four, on Amazon, 4 99 Yeah, you can. You'd probably but, buy um, me on Amazon. Yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you're here. The Ferengi <laughs> were in um, the first series of um, Star Trek Next Generation. I had no idea of that. Sorry. Yeah, of course they were. Yeah. And those huge close up things on the screen. It was really quite revolting, actually. But yeah, I remember... um, I'm sure your dad was a big fan of Star Trek The Next Generation, Jamie. Uh... He wasn't. Do you know? Was do you know something I don't know? No, I mean, he, he, he really liked Gene Roddenberry and they got on very well and they went. Uh, well, Gene went to his office at Pinewood and they drank almost an entire bottle of whiskey together uh, <laughs> whilst patting each Fair other enough. on the back. So that's nice. That's um, a brilliant anecdote. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. But I don't think um, I don't think he was a, a yeah a regular watcher of Next Gen. Sadly, I was, but he never sat and joined me and said, "This is brilliant." <laughs> I remember actually, my father, who didn't like science fiction at all, came to see First Contact with me. I was just going to see it, and he just said, "Oh, I'll come to that." And he really loved it. He, and I, yeah. I said, God, there must be so much you don't understand. But the film was so well made and so well crafted that it's a bit like you, Shelley, with watching that final episode. It's kind of like there are... Well crafted? Yeah, there are... No, I mean, <laughs> your experience, sorry. But, but also, you. oh, dear, I've done it now. Um, you know, <laughs> there are enough hints in there for you to know that right. these are things that are callbacks and okay, you know. And I remember at the end saying to Dad, like, you probably didn't get the whole thing. And he said, no, no, he'd clearly met these Borg before and they'd taken over his mind. And I thought, blooming heck, you got all that. And for yeah. a man, a, a much older man mm. who didn't like science fiction, he just loved it. Yeah, well, that's that's, that's, I, an, that's an homage to the writing because yes. it, to, to assume, to write something and to assume that everybody who's watching it has seen every single thing and knows every single inside little, you know, glance, like, Ooh, what did that mean? You know, it's just, it's really nice. And that's why I enjoyed it so much was because I, I didn't feel, I mean, of course I would have gotten more out of it had I watched the entire series, but it was good enough that I could watch it and go, all right, I dig this. I'm into it. I want to know what's going to happen. And I want to know if they're going to save, save it, you know, if yeah, they're going to, yeah, yeah fix it or whatever the, the last episode of star trek enterprise is rather good by the way um uh, here's some random suggestions that people made that uh, uh, john dorney wrote on my facebook page hetty wainthrop investigates i love it i, I love it no i i, I knew this absolutely love that show uh hetty. I, know, I know i know that he was joking but I, I but on a serious note i love i love hetty i remember Wayne. watching it i don't i remember liking it i can't remember anything specific but it was definitely um yeah, it's good. Got it's, a thumbs up from younger me. My old friend Martin Montague suggests sausages. <laughs> mm. uh, Jenny Shirt says airplane. Classic uh, film. Yeah, classic. Shirley. But don't, don't call me Shirley. Shirley. Dad, Dad loved that, by the way. Oh, did he? Just did he? Uh, loved all those gags. And when they would repeat them afterwards out of context with no layup or anything, so they just weren't funny. And then we'd get <laughs> cross with me for not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> The Feathered Serpent, which has been suggested so many times. Fantastic. You know I, it's a bit I, like the Aztecs. <laughs> yeah, that's the Egyptians thing, isn't it? Which isn't, there is another show called The Egyptians the, the, as well. The, yeah, The Feathered Serpent is about a Mexican. Um, uh, oh, I like yeah, Aztecs. An ancient yeah. civilization. And Patrick Troughton started it. Patrick yeah. Troughton. Uh, and it was Patrick Troughton. And it was done in the 70s. It was a children's television program on ITV. And it had very authentic. Uh, musical instruments from the time doing the music it was also but it was a fantastic piece of sort of conspiracy court drama sort of thing i tried to find a clip of it on youtube and hilariously the only thing i could find is somebody who who's uploaded all the episodes but they've not uploaded them like here are the episodes <laughs> they put a camera in front of their telly desperate times call for yeah. desperate measures sometimes i like that you can watch a film it's, it's like it's like back in the um back in the 90s when they were like pirate copies like oh friend would, yeah pirate they'd be like somebody you'd be watching it somebody get up or you yeah it's like go, you're watching that mystery <laughs> science theater <laughs> with the the silhouettes of the people in the corner it's like, yeah yeah so bad you hear people coughing this, this, <laughs> this is rubbish. <laughs> dear, there, oh dear. But many suggestions of, of uh, the end of Blake 7. Uh, and I nearly did watch the last episode of Blake 7, but then I just thought, I can't be asked. 
Um, <laughs> and then uh, the uh, the prisoner fallout, uh, which Good is episode. a crazy, crazy episode. Uh, what else? Oh, someone suggested we reviewed the first edition of the Benji and Nick show. I thought that was a great idea. Matter, I mean, matter, where well, we're so drinking the, soup. The I'm drinking line, soup, yeah. aren't I? So I've, I've just made the first onion line. soup. <laughs> I've made some soup. Yes, I remember that very clearly. I remember, I remember the day we did that, actually. <laughs> the Doctor Who, the, the invasion. Yeah. Like the invasion, eh? Yeah. Professionals. Yeah. I love the invasion. Watch it endlessly. Uh, love the professionals. Watch that endlessly. And the Sweeney, actually. Wow, wow. What the Sweeney needs to be on Britbox is all I'm saying. It's on and Amazon Prime. That's mm. no good to me. I've got the whole set, so there we go. I've got the whole set as well. Well, there we I'm go. Not, what I'm not trying to be about? better than I just you. watch it. Yeah, but it's I've got better. all of them ever, and I oh. have all the Doctor <laughs> Who classic and episodes, I've even the ones that they bought. painted them yellow. I've got, I've got John. All. I've got John <laughs> Thor in the wardrobe. What are you going to do now? <laughs> I met John Thor. I've said that several times. Was he in a wardrobe? He wasn't. I was. No. And he was saying, was he a nice Nick, bloke? I can't, I haven't got the key. Um, no, he, uh, uh, say the safe word. No, I, um, <laughs> I, he was nice. He was very nice. He was very ill at ease doing publicity. So he wasn't, he wasn't effusive, but he, you could tell he was a pleasant and decent man, but he did not really want to be there. It was a round table thing. A bunch of us interviewed him. It was actually for a series he did called Kavanaugh QC. Oh, and, yes. and they did a publicity roundtable and I was working for a magazine at the time and I went along with my digital recorder and I'm uh, frankly boring myself. But anyway, did, did you annoy him all throughout and say, hey, hey, John, John, you're nicked. Yeah, get, get your trousers <laughs> on, you're nicked. Yeah, so, I should have yes, said. Yes, yes, Nicholas, very funny. It's no, the fourth time today you've character. said that. He's not being that character. One of, one of the producers of the series was a guy called Chris Kelly. Does that mean anything to anyone? Uh, yes, I've met him once. Chris Kelly used to be the presenter Adam. of a, a children's film review program called Clapperboard in the 70s. I typed his name in. It just said Chris Kelly is one half of 90s rap duo Chris Cross, no. who died from a <laughs> drug, <laughs> a, <laughs> drug a, a, a <laughs> overdose of heroin and cocaine. So I don't think oh, it's wow. the same bloke. Cheerio. Well, Clapperboard was a fantastic show. It was all about movies and they used to go behind the scenes on big movies. It was a kid's show and they used to do proper set reports and everything. I bet there is loads of I fantastic think, behind, I the think, fo- behind the scenes I, footage from movies. I think shot that I was, um, I was developing some VHS tapes that were off air recordings. And um, one of them was a clapperboard, which is they had a feature out on oh. tux. Um, de little, little, um, de li, um, de little, little, um, de li. That's how it started. <laughs> um, listen, it's, it's the end of the podcast. What are the last words we want to say? It wasn't clapperboard. I've just realised the the lines. Squirrel. Sorry, that was what I was going to say. Final words. Um, mirror, mirror. I, mirror. I just want to say squirrel. There's a squirrel in the mirror. There's a squirrel. <laughs> now I just want to say a huge thank you for everybody listening. Um, shout out, you know, to Mister C, uh, the Loch Nessers, the Loch Ness gang. Um, who've yeah. always been lovely. Just everybody that's written in. Really, it's so nice to just, you know, it, it's. Overwhelming, I think, is the word I would use when you're reading those emails and you're getting people who are saying like they've made th- uh, they've made friends through the Benjamin Nick show and made how we've enemies. gotten through, made enemies, <laughs> made paper mache sculptures, you know, Started they're... bitter feuds. <laughs> but it's nice to know that that people you know have made friends through us and got through some really rubbish times of all the pandemic and stuff, listening to our absolute nonsense. And so it's just nice to to be able to do that. And I'm sorry that we we can't continue it um but such is such is life hmm. very profound yeah. uh, can i i throw in as a part-time uh lazy interloper lemon that, frangipan, uh, yes. lemon frangipan <laughs> that i i'm very aware how much time it takes to put together a podcast and uh, what a huge amount of effort it is so well done to all three of you for making a lot of people very happy and keeping their peckers up through a difficult time and managing to do this all with such good cheer and with no breaks pretty much expect that week when you made me watch star trek briggs when you were you know having a lie down <laughs> um so <laughs> but i had some kind of pre-covid infection exactly yeah you big wuss anyway but, you know well, well done to the three of you i'm you know on behalf of your listeners thank you well done brilliant and uh, uh yes i'm i'm also sad that it's over even though i've only paid played a kind of 0.001 percent part in it i think you got one of the zeros wrong um oh, <laughs> shelly yes nick 
sad words will be said now. Um, it has been an absolute, I'm going to cry, absolute pleasure. <laughs> and I will miss this a lot. And thank you to all the patrons who supported us and yeah. allowed us to do even more extra crazy silly stuff <laughs> that <laughs> yes. just went completely off the rails. Oh, the recipes. And, oh, the recipes, the after parties, the inside the tally. Come on. Inside well, the no tally. Nobody has had the pleasure <laughs> of that. <laughs> unless you pay for the patreon <laughs> just just to interrupt you really quickly shelly i just want to thank you as well i'm gonna stop you right because, there because um, <laughs> yeah, just stop you. stop you right but i just want to thank you as well because you were in such an integral part of of us doing the patreon um without you it would have been a shambolic nightmare because me and nick are so incompetent <laughs> about anything like that and you you, you swooped in and just said we can do this. So organized, so fantastic. So honestly, from a, from a perspective, you really enabled that to happen and your yeah, contribution yeah. has been so vital. So thank you for that. Uh, I just felt it was important to, to tell you that <laughs> you are so appreciated. Thank definitely. You. Definitely. Thank you. So that's it. I'm going to keep crying now and <laughs> just oh, say okay. thank you to everybody. And you've made me feel welcome. Oh, and I yeah. know me coming in after you guys having done this for so long and then you threw me into the mix. It could have gone horribly wrong. And people, you know, some everyone, people everyone. might have hated me, but a lot but, of people really liked it. And I, was, I, I felt very welcomed. And I really, really, really appreciate well, you, that. You were, you were, you are. And, and the thing is, uh, I can tell you now with absolute honesty, and this is a sort of negative way of looking at a positive thing, but no one ever wrote in <laughs> to say anything <laughs> negative about you. When people wrote in, they all just said it was great. <laughs> Yeah, and they I, said you were. And great. I called you a liar when you told me that. Six months <laughs> seriously, ago. I, I, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I, was I like, wouldn't be saying so this. Full of it. He's I wouldn't be saying this. Really lovely emails saying, "Oh, we love Shelly. She's so great." And I was yeah. like, "Okay, that was one out of fifty. The other forty-nine were like, Shelly sucks. <laughs> get her off." <laughs> nobody, nobody ever said anything. No. So, uh, well, negative. thank you for the people who lovely. didn't like me who do for not writing in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got them all locked in the wardrobe with John Paul. Uh, what? And a squirrel. A squirrel with a mirror. Squirrel. <laughs> um, I, I can't really add to everything you've said, guys. Um, so just what a thing. I would just look to the future and say, let's come back and do a Christmas special. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> let's ho, do that. Ho, ho. Ho, let's do it. Yeah. And we'll do it at Christmas. Don't start doing it now, Benji. It sounded like yeah. you started. Oh, yeah. Let's jingle do it. Jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> let's do one. Let's just do it now. <laughs> do it live. Oh, there we go. Thanks, I folks. Only I'm coming. One tune to play us out with. What's that? Oh, there we go. A Southern Rhapsody. Now that will make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one by the Eric Winston Orchestra? I have no idea. This is the oh no, it's the actual man. one. It's the actual one. Yeah. Marvelous. Well, until oh, thank Christmas. you very much. It's goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.